It is the time of festival, and the city is all bedecked in her luminous glory. The palace has been lit and the streets festooned. People are out in their finery, celebrating the spirit of the Shep. The Shera, or the festival of lights that comes but once a year, but leaves an afterglow that lasts all of 12 months here. Pomp and pageantry marks an event whose present form dates back to the time of the Maharajas. And even in these times of democratic equalness, when more than half a century has elapsed since the last Maharaja climbed off his throne, all roads during the Shera still lead to the palace of the Wadiyas in the city of Mysore. Srikanth Wadiyar, scion of a long line of royals, now ascends the Gaddi, or throne, of his forefathers, but once a year on the Shera day. When the Vijayanagar's empire was on the wane and the Europeans yet to march inland, the Wadiyars, small-time chieftains of the region, ignored the authority of Vijayanagar and carved a kingdom for their generations to come. A kingdom that was not only blessed with fertile soil and a temperate climate, but one which saw come to the throne some far-sighted and benevolent rulers, particularly those of the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Rulers who incorporated the advancement of science and education into working for the greater good of their subjects. Maharaj had about four cars. First time, 1907. At that time, we had two cars. Then later on, four. Sometimes palace requires cars. They used to get our car. They used to get our drivers. Now you will see thousands of cars and lakhs of two-wheelers. We had the first car, DD and Spanish Souza, French car, which was brought by Prince of Wales. Two cars had come. One Maharaja Mysore took it and one we took it. Asim Seth is 78 years old and he forms the link between the Mysore of old and the modern Mysore. Born much before independence, this old patriarch had once rubbed shoulders with the royal family, but found his true vocation in the service of the people and later in politics. In acknowledgement of his efforts, he has a locality of Mysore named after him. A rehabilitation scheme that is named as the Asim Seth Nagar. Modern Mysore today has yet not managed to wipe away its links with the royalty. Though they now mostly house government offices, the palaces and buildings of Mysore present the visage of an early 20th century princely city. The civic architecture of Mysore is a blend of Indo-Sarsenic and the classical European. But there is one building in Mysore that stands apart from all else. A neo-Gothic structure that acts not only as a landmark visible from far and wide, but one which stands testimony to the secular nature of Mysore. The 
foundation stone was laid by late Maharaja, and uh, the whole uh, the family has helped this you know, for the construction of the church. It has taken 10 years to complete the church, 1931 to 41. The people from different region, say from uh, Bombay or Madras or from Goa or from abroad, different countries, they have sent a lot of donations, uh, contributions those days, say 1930s uh, something. All these names are inscripted in the catacomb there, St. Philomena's catacomb. So you get about more than 5,000 names are inscripted there. To the imposing bulk of St. Philomena's Cathedral, Ishmael is busy working in his small one-room factory. Like the erstwhile rulers of Mysore, Sayed Ishmael too has a long lineage. But it was not riches that Ishmael inherited, but the tools and knowledge of his forefathers. For he comes of a line of craftsmen who over centuries have created poetry out of wood. Poetry that has given to Mysore one of its recognizable trademarks and to generations of Ishmael's a source of livelihood. Mysore had for long been the nucleus around which developed the indigenous culture of the Kannadigas, the people who spoke the Kannada language. When the state of Karnataka came into being in 1956, it was around the territory ruled by the kings of Mysore. But it was not Mysore that became the capital of the new state, but Bangalore, 110 kilometers away. Mysore remained the provincial town. A district headquarters that was steeped in history, Mysore escaped the mindless development that typified the second half of the century, while it retained most of the romanticism of the first. It was only in the 90s that the city actually began to change. Total population of Mysore was almost 75,000. Then I, as I grew up, I saw the population up to 2 lakhs. Today the population is about 8 to 10 lakhs. And your number of extensions now. Even this is an extension. About uh, 15 years back this extension came into Bani Mantar. All these are new layouts. My impression of Mysore was that it was really uh, a garden city as it was known to everybody. Uh, it was beautiful, green, lots of flowering trees, and uh, the roads may not have been as broad as they are now, but they were good roads. And the traffic, of course, wasn't at all, uh, you know, heavy. And uh, it was um, a very friendly, pretty city. The people got on very well. There was no discord between communities. Everyone celebrated their feasts in a very cultured way, enjoyed themselves. 
Sheila Irani had come to Mysore as a young bride. Having been born and brought up in an Anglo-Indian family in Pune, Sheila had married a Parsi and the young couple established a business in faraway Mysore. Now more than four decades since she became a resident, Sheila has fond memories of the city that had welcomed her with open arms. You could never forget Mysore. Once you, you love the city, you always, wherever you go in India or even abroad, you love to come back. Because there is something that draws you. It's a very strange feeling. And it draws you here. I don't know what it is. It's just uh, the peace, the quiet, and the meeting of old friends. That's so attractive. The huge and ornamental Vrindavan gardens were laid out below the embankments of the imposing Krishna Raja Sagar. A man-made reservoir set up by a far-sighted Prime Minister of the Mysore Kingdom, the Krishna Raja Sagar, the associated dam, and the Vrindavan gardens below not only created a reservoir of water, but turned out to be one of the major landmarks that was to be always associated with the city. Around 20 kilometers beyond the city limits, the gardens occupy a special place in the heart of the Mysore. Over the years, the face of urban Mysore underwent a gradual change. There are areas and activities in and around the city that seem untouched by time. In small hamlets surrounding Mysore, life remains connected to the pale yellow cocoon of the silkworm. These are the satellite settlements whose inhabitants earn their living by tending and nurturing the silkworm. It is silk that had given Mysore its first industry. And though there are big government cooperatives who hold sway over the business, silk still provides the means of a livelihood to the likes of 44-year-old Srikant and his family. The whole family participates in the daily chore of rolling the fine silk thread that would one day be woven into the famed Mysore silk saris. Saris that would adorn the bridal trousseau of many a woman from far and wide. Silk, uh, silk sari jo hai, local customers ke ziyada kharitte hain. Jo matlab garib bhi ho, jo amir bhi ho, special yahan ke sirf ziyada hi kharitte hain. Matlab local aur thode villages ke log bhi, wohi log silk hi kharitte hain. Matlab shaadi mein to silk sari hona hi hai na. Wohi sab se ziyada silk hi kharitte hain. Wohi sab matlab bahar se aate hain, log tourist se, matlab out country se bhi aate hain. Wo log material aur saris yahan se material bhi leke wahan pe jaake dress silva silate hain. Overlooking Mysore, there is a small hill, the 1,062-meter-high Chamundi Hill, the seat of the Hindu goddess Sri Chamundeshwari. The goddess was the family deity of the Maharajas of Mysore, and legend has it that the demon Mahishasura was slayed by the goddess. The city of Mysore derives its name from the demon the goddess slayed.
It is in another corner of Mysore that Zakir Bhai has his small bangle shop. Syed Zakir Pasha's family have been residents of Mysore for as long as anyone can remember. His was a family that had survived at the lower end of society and it was only in the past decade or so that Zakir and his brothers had opened their small businesses. Having achieved some measure of economic stability, Zakir found the time and inclination to participate in a community sport that accorded him a further degree of social respectability. जो मैं दस साल के पीछे था ना कोई नहीं जानते थे मेरे को फिर मैं रजिंग प्रैक्टिस किया ना तब से मेरे को जरा स्टेप बाई स्टेप में ऐसा हुआ कि एक कुश्ती लड़ा तब मेरे को इंटरेस्ट किए लोग लाइक कर रहे मेरे को वहाँ से मेरा नाम मालूम ही नहीं था किसी को तब से जब मैं लड़ने के आया प्रैक्टिस करने के आया तब मेरे को जानने लगे आदमी वहाँ से मेरा नाम इम्प्रूव होने के आया फिर मेरा नाम प्रोपोगंडा आप करे फलान जाकिर बोल जाकिर जाकिर बोल के तब से मेरे को जानते हैं नहीं तो अगर से मैं रेजिंग प्रैक्टिस नहीं करता तो कोई नहीं जानते थे मेरे को रेसलिंग स्कूल और तालीम एज दे आर नोन हेयर attract a lot of interest among the locals. But it is the youth belonging predominantly to the Muslim community who are the members, and every morning in and around the mohallas of Mysore, the youth arrive at their respective talims to practice and to share in the brotherhood the sport accords its practitioners. practice, we are all together. We practice all together. जैसे का मेरा कंपटीशन हुआ तो हमारे पूरे लड़के हैं ना पूरे ये खो के मेरे को प्रैक्टिस देते हैं ऐसा नहीं जाकिर भाई ऐसा नहीं ऐसा बोलो ऐसा करो बोल के तो मेरा हौसला बुलंद करते हैं वाइल जाकिर एंड हिज फ्रेंड्स आर बिजी रेसलिंग the higher echelons of Mysore society are also up early in the morning at the 110-year-old Royal Mysore Turf Club. Situated in the flats below the Chamundi Hills, the RMTC, which has always had a restricted membership, attracts not only the race jockeys and the stable owners, but also the golfing enthusiast. The Maharaja sold the property to the club in the year 1969. One of the conditions he had set forth was that Mysore Race Club should promote the game of golf, which we have been doing. We conduct annual tournaments and it attracts the cream of players from South India. And sometimes people come from as far as Assam. And uh, 1989, the golf club, Jai Cham Rajudir Golf Club has been formed. And now they are looking after the course, maintenance, etc. And uh, the government of India has tourism department has pumped in a lot of money and uh, the course has been upgraded to international standards. In the early years, the RMTC had been under the control of the Kings of Mysore and had been run on the lines of a private club. In 1968, the club became a limited company, and from a mere 60 to 70 horses then, it grew in popularity, and by the late 90s, more than 700 horses are taking part at the races here. Though smaller in size, compared to the clubs of Calcutta, Mumbai, or Bangalore, the Royal Mysore Turf Club is very much a part of the city, and is also unique in at least one aspect. This uh, course was built in early 1900s. It, it, it's about 93 years old. And the course was designed by an Australian architect. And it's designed as a monsoon architect. Even if it pours for two hours, within 20 minutes, you can conduct racing. Unlike other race courses where once it rains, finished. You have to pack up. The club is taking efforts to market the game. And uh, there are plans around underway to telecast it live 
to the other cities in India as well as to neighboring countries like Sri Lanka and a lot of interest from Dubai where uh, advertisement revenue is bound to come in and that will grow, add to the growth of the city and the club in general. Balavain Krishna completed his studies and left Mysore to seek his fortune in a foreign land. Having practiced medicine with a certain amount of success, Dr. Krishna married and lived a comfortable life in the U.S. for 20 years. But Mysore had always been special and he wanted to do something different. When I was in America, I saw how Ayurveda is spreading in the West and I felt it was very necessary to start a center in India which is of international standards so we can represent Ayurveda globally. Mysore is very rich with history of Ayurveda. There are Ayurvedic colleges here. During the Maharaja's time, there, it was a very flourishing uh, system of medicine here. So there is a lot of cultural uh, tie-up and bondage for Ayurveda in Mysore. Life continues in Mysore as it follows a laid-back pattern. The inhabitants of the city go about their daily chores and life goes on. But life in Mysore had been irrevocably changed sometime in the first quarter of the 20th century when a small sweetmeat shop inaugurated their latest offering and Mysore Park was born. Mysore and Tandre, Mysur Pak Prasidi. Mysur Paku Ido Sumaru Nuru or Shagal in the in the no bandide. Idina Nama Mutata Naranta Takasra Mada Panavaro Aramane Ele seat Padartagano Mari Kurutita Maharajali. Aval in the Nue Nama Yesuro Prasidi Bandide. E Mysur Pak Marvakun Awaga Maharaj Riga Namatata or Mar Kurtid. Now, Aramane Adamele, Namatata or Swiss Tolitro. Ali Mysur Paco, Prasidiage, Sumaro Aruba Sugala Mele Agile. From this small, rudimentary kitchen, Kumar and his two brothers continue to keep their family's tryst with the palate of Mysore. More than 30 kilos of the sweet is sold every day from their small shop in the center of town. And every day, people throng to buy their quota of the heady sweet, a sweet that aptly took its name from the city of its birth, a sweet that is reflected in the nature of the city's inhabitants. <laughs> <laughs> 